the noblest motive is the public good. A fellowship and a master's in nuclear engineering, he holds a nuclear safety patent, a licensed reactor operator, uh, a former nuclear industry senior vice president. What I'd like to talk today about is uh, can, uh, can Fukushima Daiichi happen here at San Onofre? And would our regulators behave any differently than the, uh, than the Japanese regulators did in giving information to, uh, uh, to, to uh, Prime Minister Khan? San Onofre leads the nation in whistleblower complaints. So we've got a, a system that has um, uh, compromised integrity on both the people and the parts. And that's what makes San Onofre unique, is that the, the process there where people feel safe to talk about these issues is compromised. I, I work at plants all around the country, and the um, and one or two whistleblowers will contact me if I'm, if I'm working on a plant with a concern. At San Onofre, I've had a dozen contact me. I've never seen that level of employee discontent. Then I think that speaks to the problems at, at San Onofre as much or not more so than the 502 that stakes on it. This is Palo Verde. The, uh, that large cylinder was removed at San Onofre, and yet the, uh, uh, the, the Edison, the owner of San Onofre, uh, didn't tell the NRC about it and claimed that the replacement generator was an identical, a like-for-like -like replacement for its, uh, for its uh, original steam generators. Um, that's what they told the NRC in 2006. But in 2004, our Reboxer has released a paper that says that, in, uh, that they knew in 2004 it was not a like-for-like -like replacement. But yet when they went to license it, they told the NRC in 2006 it was. And in 2012, they told the NRC that it was not just like for like, it was improved like for like. In a national publicized paper. You know, and that gets to this integrity issue again. In, in 2006, that was a peak year for whistleblower complaints at San Onofre. So, um, you know, and I believe there's a direct relationship there. Um, the integrity of people affected the integrity of parts. Moving forward, um, Edison's own consultants can't agree on the cause of those two failures. Uh, Arriva says they're one thing, then Westinghouse says they're the other. Um, Edison's analysis has never been tried before in, in, uh, in, in licensing of a nuclear plant. The, um, the Friends of the Earth, uh, the pressure of the, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and the Atomic Safety and Licensing Board agreed that moving forward with Edison um, on San Onofre without a public hearing would be an experiment. And I don't think they, there were eight million people within five, uh, 50 miles. I don't think that's an experiment that I'm willing to take a risk. In. in Tokyo, and Tokyo is 140 miles, about 200 kilometers away from the Daiichi accident. I did that five times throughout Tokyo in five days, in front of their judicial center, um, on a public street, in front of a, a, a religious center, and I, I brought the samples back, next slide, and all of them tested as high enough to be treated as radioactive waste here in the United States. That dirt on the sides of the sidewalks would have to be shipped to Texas in drums and stored for 500 years. And yet, in, in Tokyo, we're letting people walk on sidewalks, essentially with radioactive waste on the sides of them. And San Diego is a lot closer than Tokyo. We asked for people to send us car air filters. Um, and the car air filter, uh, these are three car air filters. One. The one on the right is, is Fukushima City, which is approximately the same distance from the Daiichi units as San Diego is from, um, from San Onofre. 
Um, each one of those black spots on there is a piece of radiation that got trapped onto the air filter of the car. Turns out a car engine breathes about the same as a human lung, um, between 10 cubic meters and 20 cubic meters a day. So it's safe to assume that if that's in the car filter, it's also in the people's lungs in Fukushima City. Tokyo's in the middle and uh, uh, not much better. And actually, the Seattle filter actually had one hot particle make it across the Pacific as well. We also asked for kids' shoes. Um, these are kids' shoes from Fukushima City. Again, the same distance from the, ac the accident as, uh, as San Diego is from uh, San Onofre. Um, and the, 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 uh, uh, the radioactive concentration on those shoes, particularly in the laces, um, was essentially off the charts. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it's not just the shoe. There was a kid attached to that shoe before they mailed it to the United States. The white line that goes off on the diagonal uh, is the Tuscarana River. On the day of the accident, uh, there was very little wind, and the radioactive contamination got stuck in the river valley. The colors you see on that chart indicate the cancer concentrations of lung cancer alone that developed within 10 years of the accident. Uh, this is peer review. This is Dr. Steve Wing's uh, analysis of the accident. Um, and it shows that the uh, <coughs> cancer incidence from lung cancer alone is 150% higher than normal. And yet the NRC's website will say there's no, uh, no one died from uh, Three Mile Island. And the IAEA, the international agency that um, uh, supposedly is the watchdog and in fact is the, uh, uh, is by charter, a proponent of nuclear power, uh, will say that less than 100 people will die from Fukushima and Daiichi. In light of Dr. Wing's work, I can't believe that to be true. Um, Prime Minister Khan said that um, our existence as a sovereign nation was at stake. You know, that when you consider evacuating Tokyo with 35 million people, that's, that goes beyond monumental decisions. Nikolai Gorbachev, in his memoir, said that the, um, the, the real cause of the collapse of the Soviet Union was not perestroika. It was Chernobyl. So we're dealing with a technology that can have 40 great years in one bad day. And the one bad day is bad enough to take out a country. So as I said on the bottom there, at what point does the risk of technology become untenable? My takeaway from the Daiichi accident, and, and, uh, and really the reason I continue to work um, on, on San Onofre is, uh, is the last slide. This is my quote. Not quite as eloquent, but next one. Uh, sooner or later, in any foolproof system, the fools are going to exceed the proofs. <laughs>